So now that we've covered some background information about electricity and magnetism, we can get down to the actual specific ignition systems on a small gas engine like this Briggs and Stratton. So there are three main parts to an ignition system on an engine like this. They are the flywheel, the magneto, and the spark plug. All three work together to complete the job of the ignition system. Now what is the job? Well, we need to create enough electricity to discharge a spark across the spark plug and ignite the air fuel mixture inside of the head. It seems pretty straightforward, but there's a lot that goes into it. So here are the three parts. Let's start with the spark plug. You may have used a spark plug before, you might be familiar with what it looks like, but the important part is that there's a gap right there. From here to there, there's a gap. Now why is that gap important? Well, this is where we want the spark to jump across those two nodes. And we talked about conductors yesterday and the electricity has to go through the air to jump one from one to the other. Now is air a good conductor? No, air is a terrible conductor. It's, it's not a good conductor at all. So we need a lot of force, we need a lot of push to jump from one to the other. This is why a small engine like this creates about 30,000 volts in the ignition system. 30,000. Now if you've ever played around with one of these and you might have some friends who've taken power fab and can tell you that it's not impossible to be shocked by an engine like this. I've been shocked by one of these a few times. The thing is, even though it's 30,000 volts, it's not going to kill you. There are almost no amps. You're in the milliamps, if anything. So it has a lot of force, it has a lot of push, but there aren't a lot of electrons jumping from one to the other. So this is the magneto, right? This is where we turn the rotation of the flywheel into electricity to bridge that gap. So let's take a little bit of a better look at this. All right, so on the engine, we have the flywheel, the magneto, and the spark plug. When we talked about the flywheel a couple of weeks ago, remember that there are magnets on it, right? Also yesterday, we talked about how an electromagnet, if we have a coil of wire wrapped around a ferrous core, like an, a nail or something, and we run electricity through that wire, it creates a magnetic field. Also, on the reverse side, if we run a magnet by a coil of wire with a ferrous core, we can create electricity. So this magnet, this is a very strong magnet right here on the outside of the flywheel, as this rotates, you'll see that it passes the magneto. And then somehow we get a spark coming down through here. So that stands to reason that this magneto is filled with coils of wire. And that's exactly what it is. Inside this magneto, there are two coils. There's the primary coil, has about a hundred windings, and it starts the process. So as this magnet comes by, the coil of wire, it creates a small magnetic field. And as it creates the magnetic field, with the movement, it creates a little bit of electricity. But there's only about a hundred windings in there, so it's... There's electricity, but there's not 30,000 volts to jump that gap. So also, there is a second bundle of windings. From the first winding has about a hundred, to the second one has about 20,000. So it's very fine wire, it's very tightly wrapped. So it, it's like a step-up transformer jumps the little bit of voltage from the first coil up to 30,000 volts. Since there are two coils in there, they work together. The magnets keep turning around, fly by that coil, creates a spark, the spark travels along this lead, and goes into the spark plug to jump that gap. All right, so you can't see inside this magneto. So I'll try to put up a, an image of the coils and everything. But basically, the coils are in here in this black portion. And these metal 
out of this metal uh, well, horseshoe shape, you want to call it. This is also there to help create the electromagnetic field. It sits up against the, mag the flywheel, but it has to sit a certain distance away. If it's too close, then there's a lot of friction, and also it's just it doesn't create the right field, electromagnetic field. It doesn't create ele enough electricity. But the same thing is if it's too far away. So we want to make sure it's right within a nice little range. We measure that range with something called a feeler gauge. Oh, come on, I'll pop this out. Do, 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 do. So these are all, these are inches and metric. So this one is eight thousandths of an inch thick. And what you can do is put these in between as you mount your magneto and make sure it's the right distance away. Different magnetos on different engines need a different gap. So you want to make sure that you read the specs of your engine to get the right magneto gap. It's also called an air gap sometimes. This is something that's pretty tricky to set up and it's, it's relatively straightforward, but it's easy to mess up because if you don't take the proper time and care to make sure that it's level on both sides, then you're not going to create a spark. If the magnet passing by the coil of wire doesn't create a good enough spark, then it can't step up through the second winding and send any electricity down to the spark plug. So it's very important to have a good gap in there. On the other end of the magneto, through this lead, is the spark plug. Spark plugs are specific to the engine. One type of spark plug might be used in a lot of different engines, but you want to make sure that you have the right spark plug for the engine you're using. Also, different engines have different spark plug gaps, which is the distance between those two points. We're going to talk about uh, spark plugs in an entire video, so we're not going to go over too much specifics in this one, but they are very important. The main thing that we want to go over today is the magneto and the internals and how it works. There are two coils, one with around 100 and two, the second one with around 20,000. So as the magnets on the flywheel pass by the coils, it creates electromagnetic field, creates electricity, steps up through the second winding, and then sends those 30,000 volts down to the spark plug. We're going to talk about the different types of magnetos in another video. It's pretty crazy how we're able to create a spark and ignite the fuel with only three main parts. But these parts are very specific and engineered to do their job perfectly. This magneto is very well designed and it's also very important that you have the right magneto for the right engine. Remember that there's the flywheel with the magnets that pass by the coils inside the magneto. There are two coils, the first and the second, or the primary and the secondary. It creates a small voltage in the first one, steps it up with the second coil because there's so many, there's 20,000, and then that pops up to 30,000 volts running all the way down. We need that much voltage because we're jumping an air gap, right? So if since air is such a terrible conductor, we need a lot of force to jump that gap and ignite the air-fuel mixture inside the engine. So that's the ignition system. 